Hello, wonderful people. Welcome again to Support Studios. This is your sister in the Lord, Teresa, coming to you from Support Studio in New York City. It is so wonderful to be back on the platform. I had some challenges with cameras and uploading contents, but by the special grace of God, things are under control now. Please expect more consistent uploads from Soprox Studios. Again, I apologize for the delay and I thank you so much for joining us again. May the Lord richly bless you. I'm going to be embarking on a long series which I titled The Three Organ Channels Through Which the Devil Entraps His Victims. Let me say it again, The Three Organ Channels Through Which the Devil Entraps His Victims. These channels are the mouth organ, the stomach organ, and the sex organs. Under these channels, I'll be discussing more extensively the third channel, which is the sex organ. Why have I chosen to discuss more particularly on the third channel? It is because majority of the Christians in the church, they have been brought under the spell of practicing sexual activities which are outside the biblical principles and norms. And this is a jeopardy to the salvation of the soul of the Christian. So what is sex as allowed in Christendom? There is only one auspice under which sex can be discussed under Christendom. This auspice is called the biblical marital union. Amen. Let me say it again. The biblical marital union. Hallelujah. That's the only auspice under which sex can be even spoken about in Christendom. So what is biblical marital union? Biblical marital union is an act of faith, a personal and moral commitment ordained by God between two people, between a man and a woman, between a male and a female. It is actually the first human um, union created by God in the book of Genesis for procreation and for physical comfort of the couple. In Genesis 5 verse 2, God created the male and female and he commanded them to multiply and um, fill the earth and subdue it. So God created marriage to be monogamous for the lifetime of the couple. And in 1 Corinthians 7 verse 33, only death has the power to separate them. Praise the Lord. Secondly, God ordained the marital union so that he may have righteous offsprings, as he stated in the book of Malachi 2 verse 15. God desires righteous offsprings. Praise the Lord. Marriage has been described as the best and the most important relationship that can exist between two people. It is both a physical and a spiritual union. Amen? It is a kind of a mystery because in the book of Mark 10 verse 8, God declared that the two have become one. And in 1 Corinthians 7 verse 39, again, only death has this power to separate them. Praise the Lord. Marriage is a serious business. It is a very serious business. Marriage is a moral commitment and it requires and deserves daily nurturing and attention. It is a lifelong consecration of the ideal of love and kindness and it must be backed with an absolute will to make it last for one's lifetime. Hallelujah. You cannot take the oath of marriage today and come back again tomorrow and say, you know what, I'm out of it. No, marriage is made to last for the lifetime of the couple until death do they part. So, making marriage to work is the couple's responsibility. It is a part in obedience that every couple must play to be in agreement with the principles which God has established for the covenant of marriage. Praise the Lord. So, everyone must understand that marriage is a job in itself and it must be done the way that God specified it. If you do not learn the rules, and apply the principles in your marriage, you will be divorced quickly before you know it. Because of every and any reason. There will always be reason for people to divorce. But you must follow God's principle. Amen? So if you are not ready and prepared to take up the job and responsibility of marriage, you leave it alone until you get more mature and more ready. Praise the Lord. This is because... As soon as you take the oath of matrimony, you have given up your right as a single individual and you automatically become spiritually one with your spouse in the eyes of the Lord. The Bible says that the two have become one and that is the way that the Lord sees it. Amen? Praise the Lord. So, when you veer off biblical sexual boundaries and you begin to dabble into sexual practices of do it your own way and do it any way it pleases you, 
This will lead you into some of the 12 to 13 or 14 extensive pervasive channels which the devil has created to lure and entrap his victims. So many people will say that, oh, I'm being so old-fashioned. But hello, the word of God cannot be changed. The Bible says it is settled forever in heaven. Not an iota, not a dot to be taken away from it. Modernity and the will of men for today cannot change the word of God. Hallelujah. So God is all, calling all of us to obedience to his word. Hallelujah. I like what Pope John Paul wrote about uh, concerning the marital union. He wrote, if you find a person in your life who understands you completely, shares your ideas with you, and believes in everything you do, you will always look forward to the night because you will never be lonely. Wonderful. That is so beautifully, beautifully written. Notice what he said. He wrote that if you find someone in your life, he did not say if you find some people coming and going out of your life. He's talking about pure monogamy in Christian matrimony. Hallelujah. And that is a lifetime affair. So this is the joy of marriage and the simplest explanation and conclusion of sex and the biblical marital union. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. May God give us the grace. May God give us the grace to obey his principles concerning the biblical marital union. Amen. Hallelujah. So I'm bringing this simple biblical explanation of marriage to an end here. So we shall now go into the discussion of the several uh, different um, sexual activities of do as you please, which the devil has uh, put down. Um, so many perversions which the devil has established in order to entrap the Christian and make them continue to live in disobedience. God completely, completely disagrees and rejects and hates these evil practices. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So thank you so much for watching our Soprog TV. Please join me as we discuss the extensive channels and the sexual trap through which the devil entraps the Christian. Please subscribe to our channel. Please like and share this channel, share this platform. Like I said, it's a dialogue, it's not a monologue. May the Lord richly bless you as you give us your own um, thoughts, you know, give us your own understanding, make a comment. We want to hear from you. May the Lord richly bless you. Again, thank you.